I've written a book about a different Michelangelo. It's still the same guy, Michelangelo Buonarroti, Florentine architect, painter, sculptor, poet. But it's not the Michelangelo who produced things like the David, the Moses, the Sistine Ceiling. It's the Michelangelo who produced things for his eyes only. So the book, which is called Michelangelo, A Life on Paper, is about that life. It's about really about his interior life. And it's an archive of the things that he put together when his mind was wandering and his hand was wandering and words popped into his head or drawings seeped out of his pen. For me, it's the incongruity. It's the randomness. It's the accidental quality. It's the private quality of these sheets of paper that makes them fascinating. At the same time, it's an archive of his practical life because it turns out that he did all kinds of different things on the same sheets of paper, which are a mixture of bits of poetry, memos to self, lists for foods and expenditures and monies, all mixed in with, with drawings that range from everything from, from doodles to uh, sublime figure sketches. But the other thing we have is that we have private, passionate remarks the kinds of phrases uh, that can only bubble up uh, from an intense and tortured soul. He has at some point drawn a cherub, and he has also turned the sheet 90 degrees and written the direct quotation from a very nostalgic poem by Petrarch about his own home territory, about the Vaucluse. But as though it's seamlessly connected. Michelangelo continues this Latin poem by writing in Italian, don't make me draw tonight because Perino isn't here. On this sheet, he writes, la voglia in voglia e poi lascia la doglia. Desire engenders desire and then leaves pain. And next to it, he writes, death is the end of a dark prison. But in the midst of this, he has contracts, he has angry statements, and he uh, also draws a, a large, rather ungainly hand and two very long extended bodies. It is the, the strange interconnections among some of these drawings uh, and uh, these passionate utterances that point somewhere to a, to a private space that I think without these pieces of paper we would never glimpse. And so he loved words, and of course we know he loved pictures. So one of the ways that this book tells its story about Michelangelo is to understand that their connections between words and pictures in his life were much more intimate and also more mysterious than we might have thought. We have these sheets with completely incongruous and unrelated fragments on them, and for me, these sheets of paper with their quite bizarre and mysterious mixtures of words and images are very, very much like dreams. Really the kind of dream that Freud analyzed in which uh, there are strange, unexpected juxtapositions, juxtapositions that if you look carefully and think carefully about the whole life of the subject, whether that's a subject in an, uh, on an analytic couch or a subject who is uh, reclining as he paints the Sistine ceiling. If you look carefully at these mysterious, seemingly disconnected utterances, you have a sense of what Freud would call Michelangelo's unconscious.